Hi, good morning. Please do let me know if you can hear me now. Um, I tried to fix the problem with the sound, so hopefully we haven't got an issue. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes here to some of you to join us and um, give me some feedback that VR work is, is technology. And I am, um, or oh, I can see some of you are coming back into the feed. So please do let me know um, if the sound is fine now. Um, I am not... I am okay with technology, but I'm um, I'm not as good as I, I I guess you know if I if something goes wrong I panic and I'm trying to like oh straight away what do I need to do what do I need to do and um, I went into the settings and I tried to sort of change things there and then I remembered that um, I don't know if you, any of you seen it that. Um, on, I think it was on BBC years and years and years ago there was a sitcom called the IT crowd and every single time when from this company somebody would phone down to the IT crowd the first question was have you tried to switch it on and off or have you unplugged it and plugged it back in and <laughs> that's that's sort of crossed my mind and um, basically all I did is on plugged the microphone and then plugged it back in and we were good to go. So, you know, who, who knows what was the problem? It was somewhere in the cable. Um, we are good to go now. So I can see like quite a lot of you back in here now. That's great. I'm just going to restart the stream on my laptop as well so I can see your comments. Work. Just one sec, bear with me. Technology. Oh well, we are, we are back up now, back up, back up. Morning again, Teresa is saying, I'm gonna go through and see your lovely comments just in a second. Um, restart, starting these, this stream here. So how is everybody today? Um, I I have been working on that, but the candle holders is done on right angle weave. Let me just turn you down and while I'm restarting the stream, I can show you the lovely samples. So the, let's come here and I am going to zoom out so you can see mo most of it. Right, so I have been working um, we had the candle holders. We made like really big ones as well um, before and um, they look really nice on the centerpiece, centerpiece or uh, with a table or the mantelpiece on like you know above your fire. Just a really nice a beaded decoration. We did do um, beaded Christmas trees and other bits of pieces and then just was a really nice addition to it. Um, to dress up your home I guess with your beads they are really nice because the candles do come out so you can throw this away and add a new one in and keep going now the same pattern do do a larger candle as it does a smaller one as well but I will talk you that in a minute but I have been thinking um, earlier this year um, that like this is looks really nice in the middle of the table but however doing matching napkin rings what we can put on the side um like you know just next to our plates and everything else how lovely would that look and would really dress up our table um just one second just get this feed up so i can see your comments That's it, there we go, right, done. Um, so I have been working on it and I think I, over, I was overthinking what um, to do with a napkin ring and I had to really sort of take my ninja skills out this morning because we are redecorating the dining room and everything is packed away to find some na napkins for you, some cloth napkins. Obviously you can use paper bars or anything as well. So this is the first one I came up with, so basically what this is is two candle holders smaller ones sort of stick together and the middle rows exactly the same and it took me <laughs> a little bit longer to make up and as i was making up i thought well this is really nice and solid but 
I'm not sure. I, I think it's taking too long. And if you have guests coming around for Christmas, you are really going to, um, you know, you really, you need to make a lot of these up. So, well, I don't know this Christmas. How many are, are we going to be allowed to sit around the table? But um, in my house, we usually it's like 12 of us. So you would need to make a loads up. So I thought I'm really just overthinking and overcomplicating what should be a really nice little decoration. So I went back and I thought less is more. So I just done a simple ring with one line of beading on it. And I was done like within half an hour. So it's a really nice, um, really nice little project. Right, Molly's on the other side. I'm here, I'm working from home today. And if you have any questions, please put Q in front of your question so we can, um, Molly can answer it, or if she can't answer it, then it, she can highlight it for me so I can see it as well. Now, on the website, we have got, um, just wondering very quickly, I can show it to you. On the website, we have got um, down on the left hand side or on the um, the top of the categories. If you go in, you can see the um, Facebook tutorials. If you go into that one, then you will see that you, we have all these lovely candle holders in there for sale. Usually they're $19.99. They make eight small one or um, less of the bigger ones obviously but um you can make your i'm going to show you how to do your napkin rings as well today right so let's just go back to the main screen i'm just very quickly going to have a look at your comments before i started making and say hello i'm so sorry that um we had to have <laughs> we not had to have but we had the, a little mishap with technology but hey how it's technology it's it's got its own mind so in the kits you're gonna have 10 strands of these lovely glass beads you're gonna have 30 grams of your toho size 8 seed beads and you're also gonna have two strands of glass beads or pearls i do match it and i do change it time to time because like you know you don't always want to make the same color or the same thing going through so um just as a comparison um we had sort of with, with this one uh what i'm going to be showing to you with this color we had sort of a different glass we did it last year this year i added a more of a tonal color to it so you can make a little bit different ones um as well so morning jitty ruth angela elaine marion karen annie carol susan allison i'm so glad that you refound the stream good morning ian um francis janet paula judith carol um nadia sheila another allison good morning allison pam rachel debbie angela Oh, Angela said, thought I would have to learn lip reading. Oh, bless you. You know, there is a feature in uh, with our video. So if you click on the, I think it's on, what side? This side? The three the three little dots at the top um, in the corner. I think it's above the Total Beads logo. Um, if you click on that, you can turn on um, a function which is um, allows you to have subtitles on your screen so that's really great as well if you if you're in a place where you can't listen or you know you can hear it um you can't hear it or, or especially have you got if you got problem with your hearing that's a really great feature that you can read what i'm saying i have got an accent so sometimes the um it won't pick it up exactly what i say but i think it it, it should be fine um morning maxine do d, d sorry d um marion sue elizabeth angela camille lorna angela sylvia rachel janet there's so many of you our lovelies are here 
Let me just go all the way down. Uh, Maria is saying, morning to all from Malta. So what I was saying when the feed started before, the, um, I was sitting here and getting ready and I was reading all the different comments you were putting on there. So this is why I think it's great to have the countdown timer because you can sort of start to interact with each other as well as me. And... Um, it's really great to see. I love our little weather report um, updates every single morning. Like people were saying that it was sunny in South Devon, but it was overcast in North Devon. And um, I think Wiltshire was sunny as well. And some of the other places you were saying that um, it's overcast and it looks like it's going to rain. So I love, I really do love it that every morning we have a little weather forecast before we start making. Right, I'm using uh, one of our new needles. I did show you this. Did I show you this yesterday? Let me just grab it. So we created a little tube with needles. I have been looking for size 11 needles for quite some time now because sometimes when you're working with, even if you're working with size 11 beads, but you have to go through that uh, bead again and again and again, um, the thread fills up the hole in the bead and then you end up that um, you block yourself you block you block you fill up the hole with thread so you block yourself be able to come through the bead again and again and again so size 10 needle is what i use the most because it's a little bit more sturdier but we do stock size 12 as well and with size 12 i bend it so quickly that um it's, it's I'll, I'll have a whole stash, but you won't have a straight needle in my household. So I was looking for size 11 needles. And in the end, um, what I come up with, so I, I, I did purchase some, which were just, just uh, um, exactly the same color, like just a normal needle. And once I put into my little mouse here, I got like a little needle holder mouse here. Um, I don't... Um, Afterwards, when I went back to it, I didn't know which one was size 10, which one was size 11. <laughs> and uh, it was just sort of picking up the needles and trying them out. Um, oh, Therese is saying it's still dark in Georgia. Oh, bless. What time is in Georgia um, right now? Do let me know. I'm so bad with time zones. And Lorna is saying it's overcast in York. It rained last night. We really could do with some rain here. My garden is getting so dry. So we, these ones, and I'm going to bring it up and I hope you can see it. They are called color eye needles. And we created a pack. Um, sometimes in the packs you only have two of each size. So you would have six needles. But if you're like me, you will go through needles like there is no tomorrow. So we put together five size tens, which are the black ones five size 11s which are these turquoise color ones and five size 12 which is the one at the end so as you can see by the end where the i'm just going to bring it up a little bit more where the eye is they they are different colors so they are so great to see which one you working with and it comes in a, a little tube so it's really nice you can keep them all in there the 2.99 on a website um Oh yeah, Molly's already put the link up for you if you're interested. They are a lightsaver, I guess. Right, so um, a couple of arms spread of thread, um, doubled over. I can move my needle further down. Now, we're going to start off by, uh, well, both of the napkin ring and the candle holder starts off in the same way. Oh, Susan is saying I ordered those needles last night. I think you're having it. I just like it did gremlin return to your measuring tool. Um, I think you have a little conversation with each other. I love it that it's such a little lovely community here that um, you get to know each other. Teresa saying 5 a.m. Oh, bless you. Um, that's quite, quite early. Are there some mornings like during the week when you have to get up, when you have to get up to work, I, I usually, it's really hard to wake up at seven o'clock, but at the weekend, when obviously you don't have to go to work and don't have to do anything, and you could have 
a huge lay-in um, I usually do wake up at 5 a.m. and can't go back to sleep so we're gonna start with a pattern we're gonna pick up a seed bead these seed beads are size 8 we're gonna pick up the uh, um, crystal glass beads here they around um, five six millimeter in size they are six mil but you can get away um, using five mils as well I guess and um, you're gonna pick up a seed bead glass bead seed bead glass bead seed bead glass all the way on until you have four sets of them I mean he's asking what size of beads you're using we are using size eight seed beads and we are using six millimeter glass beads and I'm gonna come through all of those one more time actually what I'm gonna do so you can see better I'm gonna pull these beads out of the shot to the side so they're not you actually don't need the pearls until later so let's take them all the way out right that's better isn't it let's take this out as well i'm just going to leave one here at the top so you can see what we are making right so i'm going to go through all of the beads i just added from my tail end to my working end Patricia is saying such a great idea with the needles I am always getting them mixed you and me both I can tell the difference between size 10 and size 12 because size 12 is just um, that much thinner so how I would test them I would put them on my finger and I would flex them and just um, feel how sort of strong they are but I can't tell the difference between size 10 and size 11 right so I went all the way around now I want to work away from my tail so I'm gonna go through the first few beads again just following my thread path I could not my um, tail and my working end together because these beads do have quite large holes but I like to not not them so because the knot can always seep into the bead and sometimes it could block you let's let me just pop this down what i'm going to do i'm going to zoom in just a little bit for you so you can see me stitching better there we go so all we created just a little loop of beads so far and we're going to go along and pick up the same again and again until we get all the way around now you can um, depending on what size of candles do you have and this is the same as remember when we did the baubles and we did talk about it that um, different companies sell different size baubles and there isn't like um, you know 55 millimeter bauble or two inch bauble or, or whatever size is the standard size they are slightly a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller I guess who manufactured them and the same with the candles as well so I like to use these ones where you have um, either the plastic ones or the metal ones so the candle is in there and I just buy them any home store or anywhere you can I love these ones I think think they were 199 from the range and they had eight of them and I just love 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 the sparkle on them so you're gonna make it around your candle holder the candle to fit it you make gonna make your candle holder around your candle to fit it so I picked up another seed bead glass bead seed bead glass bead seed bead glass bead seed bead so I started with a seed bead three glass beads and I finished with the seed beads and locate what glass bead you are coming at on your row I'm gonna go through that one again from the other end so I'm forming another loop so if I'm coming out up here I'm gonna come from the other side and pull this tight and I'm gonna pull this up I'm gonna suspend this on my finger so it doesn't jump about um, so we added our second little we got like a eight <laughs> a figure of eight so far so now we're going to need to move along around this circle we just added to be in position to add a further bead so i'm just going to move along just like that until i get to the far end and i'm just coming out of the glass bead there 
and then I'm going to pick up the same pattern. I'm going to pick up one seed bead, glass bead, seed bead, glass bead, seed bead, another glass bead, and finally and last, it's going to be a seed bead. And I'm going to go through this one more time again, just like that, and pulling it through. And we're going to keep doing this. Now I'm going to move along again before I add the next loop. We're going to keep doing this until we have the right number on our strip of beading, I guess. And up. And I'm picking up the same thing again. and pulling it through. A polish thing you can turn sub ties on using the clock wheel. It's depending I guess what what device you're using or watching it on. But yes we have got that feature. I was really excited about that one. Because sometimes, like, you know, if you're somewhere, you can't always have the sound on when you're watching it. If you are, like, cheekily watching it at work or you're just watching it on the train or somewhere, where you don't want other people to know what you're doing. And I'm going to, so as I go along, I do like to flip-flop it backwards and forwards. So I always sort of work away from myself. It just makes it quicker for me to bead things up. Marcia is saying hi Kitty, hi Marcia. I'm just adding the same pattern. Now for a smaller candle, what I have, well it's not the small one, this is, this is the normal size of candle I guess and this is the gigantic one, um, what you can buy now. Uh, for a smaller one you need 13 sets but you're gonna stop at 12 because the 13th set will be connecting your ends together to turn it into a band. So at the moment you got a strip of beading and you're going to need to turn it into a band. Are we still having problem with the audio um let me just have a look molly can you let me know row the right angle weave yes it's a technical technique called right angle weave well it's sort of a variation of it because once we get down to the next row we're going to go into modified right angle weave so at the moment for the strip which is this strip is in the middle of your candle holder like so that strip is what we're beading right now is the strip right into the middle and then when we go down to the bottom and do our bottom strip it's going to go into modified right angle weave I'm just going to take my thread around. I'm almost there. I need to add a few more squares. Jeanette is saying I'm on a tablet. Uh, Lorna is saying, sorry, got to go catch up later. Bye, Lorna. See you later, lovely. Um, no audio. Fine. Um, sound is fine here. Kitty, my sound is good. Very good. Very good. It's like sometimes if something happens, that something stops working, you like sort of get paranoid afterwards and keep thinking, is it still working? That's seven. But as long as we are good, that's what's count. So I'm just keep adding the same. And then I'm stepping up. Just making a little strip. Oh, everything sand is good, so that's great. 
Has any of you done this one before? Because we had the candle holders around for, I don't know, a year or two. Sometimes the years and months which sort of just blend into one another. And um, I'm just saying, oh, well, I did that last year. And then when I'm thinking about it and I'm trying to look for perhaps instructions or something on... Um, my hard drive because it's sort of I save the files by year um I find that no actually that wasn't last year I did it like three years ago but in my mind is still I did last year um Debbie's asking are the six millimeter beads round um they lack a little bit of a soccer ball shape I guess um they just they're just sort of glass beads you could do them with round beads you could do them with um, rice beads as well, I guess. But just they, we're not really going to see them that much because once we finish them, we're going to cover them up with our decoration row. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As long as you have around six mil, you are fine. So, I'm going to make this into the candle holder. But if you wanted to do the napkin ring, uh, depending on how big you want to make your napkin ring. So this one is nine, 10. This one is 10 sections. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I wanted to make this size, I would stop here and link up my end with the beginning. And I will show you how to do that just in a sec because when we do for the candle holder we just i need three more there's two couple of more of these little squares um and then you would tighten up one side tighten up the other side and i'm going to talking about you how to tighten it up and then just add the decoration on the top and that's really easy how to do it and now i made this one up you know what i'm going to have to do i'm going to have to make 11 more <laughs> to fit my table I love this color as well. Oh, what a good idea, Marion. Marion is saying, thinking, we'll make the napkin holders in different colors for each person and make wine rings in corresponding color way. Very good idea. Thank you for the tip. I think that would look really cool. And, and again, like, you know, when you have... Um, like for Christmas, you would have crackers on the table and they, they sometimes you get a pack and they sort of different colors as well. So I think that would look different colors would look really good. You could also, you could make them in same colors, but add like a little charm to it somewhere. So you know that, um, like um, charms I'm thinking like a cat or a dog or some sort of shape or so they, there's so many different ways you can do it I think it's so nice to have a um, I love that that so at Christmas usually I set the table the day before and um, so it's all all the table is all set it's ready to go and you know, it, it, it takes probably about an hour or so just to sort of keep going backwards and forwards and straightening it. And just it looks really, really nice. And I love it. Um, it's all about the excitement that you're creating um, going like towards Christmas and doing and putting everything together and making up new things. So I got two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, I got the right amount. So I need to put this around my candle now to be able to link it up so i'm gonna go and um weave my needle and thread to the end as i would be adding further beads but instead of adding the pattern i just been adding all the way through i'm just gonna pick up one seed bead one six millimeter and another seed bead I'm going to let this go all the way down and you need to make sure that your beading strip is straight so I like to put it in front of me I'm going to loop the end back on itself so I know it's nice and straight 
and then I'm gonna go through this last but this very first glass bead you can see that so I'm coming out of the last one from the same side so if I'm coming out on the right side I'm gonna come through from the right side and pull this up then I'm gonna pick up another one exactly the same and I'm gonna go and stitch back just pull this up nice and tight I'm gonna stitch back to the last glass bead on my last loop that's it and pull this up nice and tight so I go now I got a continuous loop what I like to do here when I joined I like to just to sort of run around these beads one more time just to sort of strengthen the connection here and I know I'm going to have a solid piece solid piece and my thread is not going to be traveling backwards right before I do anything what I am going to do is I'm going to run around the top of my candle holder here if I was doing the napkin ring which is I would make the same band for it just like this I I don't need to add another row to it I would be going to run around one side here to close this loop up because at the moment you can see how big is this and how big our candle so we got a very a little bit of a wiggle room here and you need that wiggle room and if you look at the candle holder from underneath it the row beneath is a little bit bigger than the row on the top and that just gives you the and even in the bigger one as well that gives you that you know you want a really nice and tight tight connection at the top but you want to be able to change your candle and pop it over the next one so by having this bottom row just a tiny bit bigger than the top row you're really going to tighten up you're making that possible that you very easily you can change it over and pop it over another gandal oh janet is saying let's hope the restrictions will be lifted so we can have our families with us um yes that's about christmas i think christmas is quite <laughs> i'm just sort of playing it by air at the moment christmas is so far away i'm not even worrying about i don't even know what we're doing so i don't even know if my mom can come or or simon's parents can come um we're just playing it by air very about closer to the date so what i'm gonna do to tighten up the top i'm just gonna go along this top row all the way around my beadwork just like that now before I get all the way around I am tightening it up and pulling it tight as I go I'm gonna pop this on a candle because as I'm going through you will see this side of my beading is tightening up now if you're making the napkin holder obviously you're not going to pop it on anything you're just going to keep going around and you need to go around maybe two or three times the more you go around the more solid your beading is going to be and each time you go around you pull it tighter and tighter Let's pull that through so I'm, um, actually I'm almost all the way around before I pull it tight, I'm just going to take to the next couple of beads. So, as you can see, if I pull this tight now, the top part is going to become smaller than the bottom part. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but um, this one is definitely tighter than what we have at the bottom. So, I'm going to pop it over a candle to make it pull it back a little bit. Pop it over a candle and I'm gonna go around again tightening this up so it's quite important to pop the candle in at this time because you don't want to over tighten this circle and not being able to add the candle in it later on and believe me I did it 
so I know I made those mistakes already so you don't have to and it's all in the instructions as well so all of our kits will come with instructions printed out instructions so you can see and make or you can refer back to this video as well right I'm just gonna slightly bit zoom out here because now I'm working a little bit further up than the candle is in there so it's not too distracting had to disappear or are you going to show size for a napkin then saying so um napkin holder is really it's up to you how big you want to make it i made it read 10 little squares so i beaded nine as i went along and um the tenth one was linking the end and a beginning together for a napkin holder that's that's all you're gonna make you make a little strip of beading like this and you're gonna keep going around on one side maybe two or three times as much as your beads gonna let you to go through and then you're gonna weave your thread to the other side and you're gonna tighten up this side as well go with exactly the same um why going through about three different times um, in a circle so it's really nice and tight the more you go through the more solid the piece of work you're going to be otherwise if you just only do it once your beadwork might be a little bit floppy and you want with the napkin rings you want it really nice and tight so i think i went have i gone around let's just do a few more beads with the candle holder you want to tighten it on a candle because you don't want to over tighten it and not being able to put the candle in there um, question how do you clean overflow wax and sometimes it falls on beads right so I um because I'm using these little tea lights I haven't really got that problem because any candle or any wax would be inside the either metal or you know you can get some of them with like plastic inserts it would be stay in there now if you're adding it to larger candles because you could do you could make it like if you want the really tall ones um you know you do the wax can go on your bead and then it can um cause like you know you you want you want to keep it nice and pristine so what i would do in that case is to put the beads um put the whole candle holder in a cup and just gradually warm up the water to get to um you know you don't want it you can't do any any higher than boiling water but you don't just want to pour the boiling water over it because then the beads can shatter so put in sort of a little bit of water and gradually warm the water up to sort of boiling and then the candle wax should come off right so i went around a couple of times i tightened up the top and i'm just gonna weave my thread right to the bottom i'm not going to tighten up this row as we need to add an extra here and as you can see this one i can still pull it out the top part i can't pull out so much so this one is still quite bigger than the top one but i do want to just leave it that way so next step what we're going to do is we're going to pick up or well, we're going to make sure we're coming out in between the two seed beads there so as we're making our pattern there will be a seed beads on either side of your glass beads i want to make sure i'm coming out in between two beads two seed beads two sided seed beads and i'm going to pick up a glass bead i'm going to pick up two seed beads another glass bead another two seed beads and another glass beads let them go down and locate it where you're coming out from so i'm just coming out of this seed bead here i'm going to step back and i'm going to go through the seed bead glass bead seed bead there and pull this tight so this will form our loop 
second one on twist loop for the bottom and now to be able to add further beads I'm gonna go along the next seed bead glass bead seed bead section on my glass bead here Um, Quarrel question, do the kids include a PDF? Yes, they do. They include a printed out PDF. So now I'm going to pick up one glass bead, two seed beads, another glass bead and another two seed beads. And I need to go down. I need to connect to this loop I just made. So I'm going to go down through this last, um, this side of my loop. I just added I'm gonna go along the seed bead glass bead seed bead at the bottom and if you've got longer needles with the same stitch you can go along the next seed bead glass bead seed bead so you in the same position to add the next set of beads that sort of just speeds your beading up a little bit so you're always um, in position to pick up the beads and you don't need to pull your thread any longer so I when I can I I um, do like to sort of push my needle through as many beads as I can so make my bead work a little bit quicker and just keep adding until you get all the way around it's quite easy so far. I hope um, everybody do let me know if you can follow it so far. And again, adding the next lot. A full red and gold would be lovely for Christmas. But of course, any color combination you want to do, you could. You don't have to, you know, be traditional. Sometimes, um, especially in our family. And um, oh, the reason actually, I, I was going to start with this, and the whole microphone thing is um, sort of um, threw me off. So the whole reason we're doing this today, because today is the, I suppose, we're starting the countdown to Christmas. There is 100 days today to Christmas. So if you are, um, <laughs> if you like me and like to start on Christmas early, and I'm some, I have to say, some years I'm super organized. And in September, as I go out or go shopping, I would buy bits of pieces and bring it home. I would wrap it up straight away and um, stick a number on the wrapping and then in my, in my phone or in, in your notepad anywhere you can make a little um, note that like present number one is from me to Simon, present number two is from us to the kids or present number three is us to Lucy or, or etc. And in that way, um, even if the kids do look around the house they're not going to find any of the presents unwrapped and we'll know what they're getting for christmas and i do make a point so i would wrap up um christopher's presents in like you know a princess wrapping up paper or i would wrap up lucy's present in um you know a, a boy um, wrapping paper or a blue one or anything like that so to confuse them even more and it worked every single year and it's I, I feel it's such a lovely thing to do because if you have their piles with their name on there and we had that one before as well they sort of demolish it in two minutes they open up all their presents and that's it all the excitement is done and gone for and um, with doing this the I always say the number um, by doing numbering the presents. Um, we all sit around the Christmas tree, or we sit, uh, sit in the lounge, and the kids would choose a present. And then I would I would look it up and say, well, they choose a number. I don't know ten. I would look it up who is that for, and then we would give it to that person, and we would watch that person open that present, and then we would move to the next present and the next present and the. Uh, the Look, I'm talking and I added two seed beads there. 
where I shouldn't have added seed beads. So move to the next present and the next present and the present after that. And I think it's just such a lovely way to do Christmas in a bit more sort of relaxed way. And sometimes we even open presents later on in the day or we don't do it you know, all, all in one. Um, I don't know. It just, it just really worked for us. But to the point what I was trying to make. What about your presents? I love the idea of numbering presents. Um, to the um, point where I was making, so Lucy, who is 13 now, when she was two years old, all she wanted is a pink Christmas tree with pink baubles and pink trimming and everything, pink, 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 because she was really into pink. And I did look into it. Um, I think at that time, we're talking about 11 years ago, we only had B and Q, we had the range and home base in um, in our town so I went around and had a little look but a box of baubles was like 20 quid and I'm thinking well if I want to do the whole tree in pink and the trimming and everything else it is going to cost me at least a hundred pound for to have pink baubles and I'm thinking I'm not really sure if I like pink baubles that much myself so we didn't do it last year we just did our traditional one and after christmas on the sales in january we were walking around um home base was i think closing down at the time and they were clearing stock and they were boxes and boxes of pink baubles for about i think they were down to two pound and three pounds something like that so i bought about four or five of them and next year we had a pink tree and to my surprise to my surprise the pink tree looked fantastic. It looked really, really good. So Christmas can be traditional or it can be any color, what you like. What size pearls? The pearls are eight millimeter, lovely. We're gonna be adding those ones next. So I am went all the way around. I just need to add the last little link here. And I already have one side of my loop. So I'm gonna come up this glass bit. This was the first ever loop we added. And I'm just gonna pick up two seed beads and a six millimeter bead and two seed beads and i'm gonna go back down on the loop we just added and along as i would go to make that connection between those beads as well and with this we have sort of finished the the skirt what we need to do for our candle we just need to add it to the decoration of the beads. So I'm going to go right out. And I haven't got much thread left on this side. So I don't want to start adding my decoration on here. Um, I'm going to sew this off. And what I'm going to be doing before I actually completely sew it off. I'm going to go around the edge here. And as I'm going, these beads are going to straighten up and sit much nicer. And it's going to tighten up our skirt a little bit. So it's going to be nice as well. Now, depending on what size you do, this skirt is going to sit sort of either... Um, let me just show you on one, actually. So it's either going to sit... Um, a little bit down to the side or it's going to be a little bit more if in the bigger one then it's going to be more straight so i think it's better this way because you're getting a if it's washed like how, how can i show it to you so you can see it right um if it was completely straight if it didn't sit on an angle you would have a smaller decoration on the bottom but because our pattern and adding different number of seed beads at the bottom here it's going to sit to a slight angle so your decoration is just going to be that um, half a centimeter bigger and deeper and it will look um more by angling this last row i'm just seeing which one i'm i don't know how i can show it to you if i put so i, I put the candle just to the end of my inside row and my bottom row as you can see it is hanging out sometimes it's easy to, to show things with camera but sometimes it's um it's a bit hard Right, Janet is saying, when my girls were children, 
Um, we always used to pick one present to open on Christmas Eve after watching service, great excitement, accompanied by hot chocolate with marshmallows. Sean is saying, yes, 100 sleeps to Christmas, 99 days, 13 hours. Oh, nobody's counting. Yes, it is 100 sleeps to Christmas. So, in Hungary, where I'm originally from, so if you don't, don't know me, I'm Kitty Robinson, and um, I'm the creative director of Totally Beads. So, I come up with all the lovely patterns and all the lovely ideas that, well, I, I hope they're lovely. You, you seem to like them. Let me just pop that out of the way um, for you. And I sit there. Um, I think it's sort of me because I got a little bit of OCD in me, I guess. I When I try something and I try a pattern, I will sit there um, hours and hours and hours working it out until I'm happy with it, until it's going to work 100%. So that's, that's my role in the company, really. Um, my partner, Simon, he's the financial um, director and he runs the show, really. He... He's on the other end of the phone. Well, any of the guys in a warehouse are, but um, and they do all answer emails as well. But he's he's mainly in the warehouse, in the office in the warehouse. So um, I'm originally from Hungary, and I lived in the UK over twenty years now. Believe it or not, it's it's gone so quickly. I remember sort of coming over in my gap year in university. I, I I think it was just like yesterday, but no, it was 20 years ago. And um, obviously I met Simon a year later and I never looked back. Uh, we had the children and then sort of England became my home. But originally from Hungary and in Hungary, it's not the 25th of December where the big dinner and everything else is, is the 24th of December in the afternoon where you have your big meal with the family, then you open all your presents. So when I was little, what would happen? Uh, my dad would take us out and mum would, we, we wouldn't even have the tree up until the 24th. So not along when you're little you wouldn't even know what day of the week is or or what is what the date is um it would be just um you know any other day so we would go out and um when i got a little bit bigger obviously we would decorate the tree together but when i was little my dad would take a sad and my mom would decorate the tree um i actually now thinking about it saying i have no idea how she would have done it or did it uh, um decorate the tree, cook the dinner and do everything else but it's all done on the 24th and then would come back and the uh, tree was really nice and it, well, we're talking about going back like 35 years I guess and decorations and everything else much much simpler and we had much much less. So I'm just um, knotting this thread off because I only got a little bit left here now so I'm just going under the beads I'm not going through any beads to catch the thread path as I'm pulling off through this little loop forms I'm going to come through this loop and pull this tight and that just forms a little knot on our bead work there so going back to Hungary we would come back and the she would be up and we would have our dinner, we would have our prezzies and it would be sort of a little, a really nice evening. That's all on the 24th. So that's all done on Christmas Eve. And in Hungary, <laughs> we always joke about this, it's not Father Christmas brings the presents, it's the baby Jesus. Because I suppose that um, us Hungarians are most of us are Catholics and... Um, I think it's just just to believe. So it's baby Jesus who brings the presents. And obviously we didn't we only had one or two presents each. It wasn't like how we do it now that Father Christmas brings a stocking in the morning and then you have your presents and all sorts of things. Right, I just take a more thread off my bobbin. I cut the bobbin off and I'm good to go from the top. And we're going to add our decoration beads. Now I'm going to pop this out of the candle so I can hold on to it easier as you can see I'm coming out of this seed bead here I'm gonna go round following any thread path come on 
Don't not on me, you thread. You've been so good all the way through. We haven't had a single knot. And I'm going to go all the way down. Now, I'm not going to go diagonally across my beads. I'm going to sort of go along and follow my thread path. So I'm not going straight through at this, at this minute. I'm just... Well, I, I suppose you could go straight through. Because you're going to be going straight through with your decorations anyway. And I'm coming out of the glass bead at the bottom of my skirt and I'm gonna I'm ready to add my pearls now so I'm just gonna bring some of the pearls in I'm gonna pick up two seed bead I'm gonna pick up a pearl and I'm gonna pick up another two seed beads and as I'm coming out of this glass bead here I'm going to turn and I'm going to go down through the next section. So I'm going to go through the glass bead at the top and the glass bead at the bottom and pull this up. And by doing that, it's going to pop that pearl right into that sort of in the middle of our square what we created before I'm just gonna go ahead and do that until I get all the way around again I would just I'm coming out of here I'm jumping and I'm coming from always top to bottom in the next section so going back to Christmas um, Charlotte is saying very pretty love the colors um, just saying, wow, lovely experience. Uh, Minnie saying, I got married in December 1998 and moved to the UK in January 1999. I was born in Fiji Islands and Christmas and New Year Day we spent on the beach. Oh, how lovely is that? Can you imagine to have, um, I don't know actually, because for me growing up, the, the most of the Christmases we had snow and, um, I don't know, or, or maybe I just remember that way, but um, in Hungary you would have snow um, in the winter quite a bit. And um, how lovely would it be on a hot beach on Christmas Day? I don't know. It might be strange. I'd love to try it one day. So, Ben comes to our Christmas because I firmly believe there is no right or wrong. There is no, like, you know, you have to follow this tradition or you have to follow that tradition or, or you know, what you should or shouldn't be doing at Christmas. I think you need to make your own rules up and just do whatever you like, basically. So, because, obviously, my heritage from Hungary, I still, within me, we got St. Nicholas on the 6th of December, but St. Nicholas is like Santa, really. He... He looks like Santa for us. Um, he brings chocolate to the children if you wear goods in a little... It very much look like a stocking. So I, I reckon it's a different um, a sort of a belief or, or different things what um, they have over here, over there in Hungary. So in Christmas, we would let the children to open up one present on the 24th. And I usually let them open up either a board game or something like that. Then, then we can sit and play all together on Christmas Eve. And on Christmas Eve, we would have a dinner. I wouldn't make it as special as Christmas Day. Um, but it would be, you know, a something a little bit more what you would do on a, on a normal day for dinner. So I do um, make a little bit of fuss, but not as much as we did. And then on Christmas Day, we would get up, they would have their stocking by their bed. I usually buy loads of, I just go into the pan shop and buy loads of little bits of pieces for them. So it takes them quite some time to open up. Now they are a little bit bigger. I think it's different. And then we would come down. It would be obvious. Come on, are you up? Are you up? Come on, let, let's go. Let's go and have a look what's on the tree. And um, they would open their presents and um, then I would put dinner on. But because we're doing the number system, don't forget. So each one of those presents are hasn't got the from who and to whom. Um, it has a number on it. So it would be number one to number 40, for example. 
Um, whenever I buy something, the, the tree goes up the first week of December because I do love to enjoy that decoration for sort of a little bit longer. And the first week of December, we will put the tree up. And whenever I buy something throughout December, I would bring it home, wrap it up straight away, put a number on it and stick it under the tree. So all the children see is all these presents are sort of growing under the tree over the course of period of December, all wrapped up. And I do see them and I do hear them. When we're not in the room, they, they go, go in and they rattle the box, they get it up and they have a look and what do you think is inside this, Lucy? And it just creates a little bit of extra excitement because they can see the presents, but they don't know who is it for. So, and they know they're not allowed to open it, but it just, gives a little bit of extra excitement and extra guessing for them that um and we obviously like the main presents we put there once they've gone to bed on the 24th but um it just really feels i love this color i'm quite happy with it so i added the pros all the way around and with this i have completed the candle holder so all it is left to do and look, this is just a normal candle. It looks really nice, but, um, oh, I have some rose gold candles like that somewhere. I wonder where did they go? I just looked around if it's on the mantelpiece because I have picked up a rose gold sparkly candles last year and I recently came across them and I thought I put them to the side, but it's not there. So if I put a sparkly one in there, I don't like to make them when I make them with a sparkly one because then the glitter can get on your hands, which is, we just have done, and I got little sparkles on there. So when I'm making them, I always just use a plain one, and then I'll transfer it into a little sparkly one. I'm gonna go not right now, but I'm gonna go and look. Look, there's a red one. The red one look I might look quite nice in it as well, and there's a golden. But I have got a rose gold which would be the perfect color for this one. I'm just gonna pop the gold one in it as well, <laughs> just to play with it, because I just made it. I think that looks really good. So you can really dress it up. Now, for going back to the napkin ring, so now you know how we formed this one. There's a couple of difference on this one. So you just make your first base row how we did it at the first place and then you're going to tighten up one side just going around two or three times really tightening up along that row then you're going to turn it around and go all the way around two or three times on the other side and you're going to do exactly the same adding the pearls to the top but instead of obviously here we went through that row and the bottom row as well to add these pearls here just adding it through every single pearl which is sitting just there every single glass bead sorry i mean glass bead sitting in there um and the pearls just gonna pop on the top of it now i did go because i had thread left over i did go through these the thread path again and pulled it a little bit stronger which has made it a little bit more stiff and that's it for it really there is nothing else you can make them on every any single size i'm not um I'm not really um, sure how to fold your napkins or how the best way. I like them sort of just pull this on it so they create a little leaf shape. Let me just zoom out a little bit more so I can show it to you. Zoom all the way out. Sort of a little leaf shape. I like that as well. And if you make your napkin ring a little bit bigger, which you can do, this is only 10 beads but um if i made it in 13 it would be this size which is this candle holder or you can make it even bigger i would i could put the cattery i'm just sticking my scissors in here i should have brought, brought some in but you could either put your cattery in here so you could put your knives and forks and everything else to sit in there with your napkin ring i think that would look really good as well 
Um, Joyce saying, talking of Christmas, I have just had my latest <laughs> totally beats delivery. Oh, bless. Um, and she's saying, when I was when I was younger, all our presents fit into a pillowcase. I used to make sure it was right <laughs> over my feet so I would know when Santa came, but never managed to see him. Oh, bless. I think, you know, I always say, let me just turn it back on the, um, the camera so you can all see me. I always say that Christmas is really, really magical and the magic, as you grow up, you kind of feel that the magic disappears, but I think it's how you make it, how, um, how you, um, take it forward the loads of little things what you do i think it gets you excited it gets your children excited i do i guess remember when i was smaller or when i was a child christmas was completely different and it was like something what but but again it was a bit of a blur but i think now when we're doing something and seeing it on my children's faces that they are so happy and they could perhaps they got a present what they didn't think they they wanted and they do give me their christmas list um <laughs> sometimes the one year lucy given it to me like I think the day 23rd of December because I kept asking her what do you want and she was like oh yeah I'll make a list I'll make a list I'll make a list and I kind of knew what she wanted and um, she finally finished her list on the 23rd of December and she's given it to me and I thought um, it's a little bit too late but thankfully I had quite a few bits um, I already got her what was on her list, like little bits of pieces she wanted. So I think, you know, it's whatever you make it. I love Christmas because it's the, the time of the year when you can be the most creative and making presents, making um, Christmas decorations for each other as well. I think it's a really great way. So last year I made a Christmas wreath with some... Um, French beaded poinsettias, what I learned from Sarah, uh, for my friend and um, a couple of friends actually, I was doing them forever, I, I did make one for ourselves as well and I did candle holders, so I, I, I made quite a few candle holders for my family and I know every single time when they take the ad and put it on the table or they put it out, they will think of me that, oh yes, I got that from Kitty because she made that for me and I'm the same as well. If somebody makes something for me, I whenever I get it out at Christmas, I have got a Christmas ornament which I got from a lady, um, she made it and she's no longer with us, unfortunately. But every single Christmas, when I get the ornament out, it does remind me of her and I think of her and I think it's such a lovely way. And Christmas is all about, for me, it's remembering each other. And I often say I don't like Christmas cards that much. I rather say like, instead of like going to the trouble to go to the shops and buy a Christmas card and then write it and then put a stamp on it and send it. Why don't you give me a phone call? Because I rather have 10 minutes or 20 minutes to catch up with you and have a little conversation with you than just get a little card. Um, a, a little card. It's nice to have a card, I guess, because you put it up as a decoration. But um, for me, Christmas is always sort of remembering everybody and it's sort of, the, the whole love around it that um, catching up with people and crafting crafting and crafting making up new decorations year after year um, so last year I did loads of these candle holders and I given them away um, this year um, I got a couple of things what I want to do so we will see we will see what we get up to with that one with the children as well but they helped me as well last year we were painting no, that was the year before. We were painting this MDF uh, cutouts um, green and making sort of Christmas. They were like sort of Christmas trees, but we didn't really decorate it overly. So it was quite a nice and elegant and basic decoration. So every single year we do something with the children and it's just really nice to be able to, you know, every year enjoy it. It's just really enjoy the love um, with everybody. Right, so that's it for me. I hope this has helped you and um, seen. let me just see if I miss any of your um, comments. Marianne is saying, my 34 year old daughter still has her Christmas stocking. Oh, bless. Um, I think this is the thing. Um, and I'll talk to you this about afterwards that I 
I am 40 and I still feel as a child. And I think you feel as a child. Let me just turn this light down a little bit because it's really, really shining on me. I think you still feel, until your parents are alive, you still feel as a child. And I still feel most of the days I feel as I am a child. Jenny's saying, I made four Christmas stockings. I used to feel two, then swapped them for the empty ones on their beds and I still have them. Oh, bless. Um... Carol saying, I have the holly and the mistletoe kit must start it. Yes, I'm going to do some of those as well. Um, I think they look really great as well. To either put it on a reef or, or do just a single decorations. But something like that, you can just make like sort of a little bunch, a little spring. Like, you know what? You would have a buttonholes on your clothes and just sort of put it around the house. And, um, you know, tight for the banister as you go along up or put you of the like just the corner of your pictures or something like that that would look really good just to give the extra little touch and if you make them up this year obviously you can put them away store them get them out next year and use them again and again and again um they are so pretty thank you kitty for another great tutorial have a great day that's from susan oh, um you are very very welcome um, Mini saying, I'm doing candle holders for presents too. I think, yes, that's such a great, because when you're doing something as a present, you're making your present, it's not, not along the material, what you spend on it. And with the candle holders that, like, you know, you're 12 99, you're going to do eight. So what's that? One pound, I don't know, 65, one pound. Yes. Yeah, something like that. One pound 63. Um, the material cost of each one of those candle holders, but it's not the cost it's your time and your love what you put into that making that and then you give thing not the value you give thing your time your effort and your love because it takes um you know the, the, the love your love of the craft to the other person um, Joy saying, no crochet crystal kit and margarita flower beads for Christmas tree earrings yeah, that, the, the uh, earrings are really nice as well. Um, Angela see me and my husband both work shifts and over the holidays. So Christmas to me is whenever we can get together over that time. Well, this is the thing, like, you know, you make it work. You, you do it however you want to do it. And um, it doesn't have to be a certain date. So Christmas can be on 24, 25th, 26th, can be on the 28th of December, if that's the when you be together. It doesn't really matter. And when you've got larger families and you've got loads of cousins and you've got loads of, um, you know, or even just friends, you usually, like, we go to our friends or they comes to have, to us on Boxing Day or, you know, the day after you go somebody else. It's just really nice to sort of... Um, Nina saying more miracle beads. So are you referring to that, that you want a few more patterns with miracle beads? And now they are back in stock and we're fully stocked. I am will be using them because they are one of my favorites in the uh, coming design. And just saying when I was younger, all of our presents fit into products. Yes, I've read that one out. Um, I have 45 days to Halloween, Sean is saying, yes, and me, um, I probably shouldn't say anything, but me and Christopher have been looking at Halloween, and we are, had a little go, <laughs> I think we, have, we need another two or three little goes, we're going to make some spiders, I think, some little wire spiders, they're going to look great, um, I'm really bad with creepies and crawlies, so as so as my Lucy, um, we are like, if, we, if there's a spider in the room, we would scream and run out, but I think I might be able to manage to sort of even adore these little crystal um, mini spiders, what we're going to be making. But yeah, that's on the list. That That's coming hopefully very soon. It's just like I have to catch Christopher when he's not busy playing on the computer with his friends. And Camille is saying, Christmas in Hong Kong, when I was young, midnight mass that opened the presents. Christmas Day, all the family would come to us for lunch and I would go after lunch to visit my grandparents to my to my prezies. So this is the thing, we all have our own little sort of routines and what we do at Christmas um, every single family. Jenny's saying, when my children were small, we used to put the decorations and the tree up after 
they had gone to bed on Christmas Eve, so it was a surprise when they got up on Christmas Day. Yes, exactly. So you know what I'm talking about when um, how my family did it when I was small. Um, these days, I like to put it up with the children. <laughs> and I'll tell you this about afterwards last year, we had such a funny story, and this was so Christopher. Um, I do have a um, my own... Um, Kitty Robinson Designs, my own page, and I do go live every Sunday, and I tell you about what happened at last Christmas. It was hilarious, um, because we do decorate it together with the children, and how Christopher came across and what he did. Um, I do. I will tell you about that Sunday. I don't want to keep you very long, because I can see that we be, we've been on here for an hour and 20 minutes already, so I must go. Um, I actually haven't had any breakfast yet, so I'm going to go and have some breakfast. Do you have a lovely day, everybody? I hope you enjoyed this and I hope I inspired you to go along and make your own Christmas decorations or, you know, your table decorations, make a little napkin ring or, or something like, you know, just to jazz up, just to make your own um, Christmas bits. Have a lovely day, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are doing fringe jewelry. So yes, it's Wednesday. Tomorrow is going to be Thursday. I did look definitely. Yesterday I, I was showing you porcupines first and then thankfully I realized that what day of the week it was. I'm terrible at that. But tomorrow we're going to be doing fringe jewelry with Tiger Tail. We got some little um, glass bead packs, which is going to be great with six mils. Um, which is coming on tomorrow. I personally handpicked the colors, so I think they're gonna look uh, well. <laughs> I'm biased because I picked the colors, but I think they're gonna look great um, for you. So have a lovely day. Keep on beading, keep on crafting, whatever you do. Um, pop a picture into our handmade group. I love to see what you're making, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.